I often find myself daydreaming. In fact, it happens a lot. Like most people, I dream about things I'm looking forward to, such as upcoming bikepacking trips or travel, maybe even the weekend. It was no different when some friends invited me on the Sloppy Joe with Cheese, a spinoff of Colt Fetter's Hey Joe Safari bikepacking loop. I guess what we didn't realize was how on point that name would prove to be. I'm sure many of you are aware that the winter in the Western United States was active, and in some cases, even historic. While the Colorado Plateau and, in general, Moab typically aren't affected as much as the surrounding mountains that saw record-breaking snowfall, it still sits on the Colorado Plateau. And this year, we were not so gracefully reminded that any bit of precipitation in the forecast is not safe. So after delaying our trip with the intent to find some nice weather, our crew from Gunnison finally settled on some dates in early April. Adam, Arlie, Chris, Tim, and I were all excited to escape the snow and enjoy some dirt. The goal was a three-day, two-night trip, and we got what we came for. Day one was beautiful, a little cloudy, but very pleasant riding temperatures. We camped off Willow Springs Road, so we started with some sovereign single track before making our way to the Klondike Bluffs trail network. This is a small fraction of the amazing mountain biking Moab has to offer. The trails meander through sandstone rock formations with the mighty LaSalle Mountains as a backdrop. These trails, especially Sovereign, are pretty fun and sometimes challenging, whereas the Klondike trails are much easier to negotiate, but still a blast. After the Klondike Network, the route crosses Highway 191, the road that eventually leads you into Moab, making it a great spot to stash water and snacks before heading into the more remote stretch of the route. The forecast called for wind to pick up in the afternoon. Sure enough, the forecast was spot on. The tumbling weeds were doing their thing. Luckily, it wasn't all that bothersome as we made our westbound trek on a collection of BLM roads. I love single track, I'd be the first to tell you that, but I also love dirt roads. They offer the opportunity to converse with friends while you ride, and there was plenty of that. But the further west we went, the more challenging the riding became with sand. Lots and lots of sand. Sometimes so debilitating that it was impossible to pedal through, even with the incredible amount of moisture the area has seen over the winter. By late afternoon, the sun greeted us, and I would even say that there were moments where it felt hot. The sandy dirt road soon became well-maintained and graded roads as we approached the Hey Joe Canyon downclimb, which is a portage of sorts. I think it's categorized as a class three climb. There's some challenging spots, but generally speaking, no ropes are needed. But after a long day of pedaling, we left that for the morning and enjoyed some incredible views of the surrounding canyons that night. That night, I woke up with sand blowing into my tent. It was warm, but the wind made for a very disruptive night's sleep. The sun rose, but it didn't really come out all morning. Around 8 a.m., it started to rain. The forecast called for 30% chance of a tenth an inch of rain. Not bad, right? I felt a little sense of urgency with the group, and I think we all wanted to finish the down climb before any major precipitation. As we started the down climb, a moderate rain turned into a steady one. 
and eventually a downpour. In technical move after move, the sandstone became completely saturated, and we questioned our footing with each step. At times, I was thinking, should we just go back up? But the group was composed and still had a good sense of humor. As we made our way to the bottom of the down climb, it started to dump snow. We finally made it to the Green River, and while the rain started to let up, the roads were, well, yeah. Real sloppy Joe. Our attitudes were no longer composed. We were soaking, and our bikes were debilitated. When the clay-filled roads get saturated enough, it's worse than any sand, and I can't think of any other word to describe it better than death bunt. You can't pedal. Actually, you can't even walk next to your bike as the wheels just quit turning. We still had a long way to go. We had miles alongside the beautiful Green River and up and out of Spring Canyon, and then plenty of miles before we would eventually hit Navajo Rocks trails. We found ourselves descending the downhills, mostly walking ups and trying to power through mud on the flats. Right when we thought things were getting better and the sun came out for a brief moment, we cleaned off our bikes, lubed the chain, but we hit more death mud that would once again debilitate our bikes and our souls. In the end, it took us eight hours to cover just 32 miles, averaging a whopping four miles an hour on day two. I think we often daydream of those good moments, yet, when you get back home from something like this, you realize that the challenging moments are really what you remember. The way you persevere, the way you cope with the uncomfortable, the way you complete something that seems so uncompletable at the time. And while we bailed to the car that night instead of completing our trip, I think it's safe to say Sloppy Joe with Cheese truly lived up to its name.